Hi, and welcome to our first video together. Uh, today, we are going to be using the polls that you guys provided, and you guys voted on a Disney theme. So, I have something special in, you know, in store for you guys. The video will probably run a little bit long because I'm going to be doing just commentary throughout the whole video. I'm going to set timestamps for you guys so you guys can jump from drawing to sketching to inking to coloring and background elements and stuff like that. So I'll set it up so you guys don't have to worry too much about, you know, getting bored and not being able to catch up. But this is an extra special video and I put a little bit more effort into it because I wanted to give you all something really cool that I don't normally do for anybody else. That was why I added the polls to it and also why I want all your input so you guys can tell me what you guys want from the videos. I didn't know if to go the instructional route and teach you guys how to use software and how to like make money with your art or if you guys just wanted some really cool pieces to look at and to see me actually go through them and do them. So I am here for you guys. Just let me know what you guys like. I hope you guys enjoy this first video and let's not, you know, stand around here just talking too much. Let's get to it, shall we? All right, let's get started on this. The video choice that you guys chose for this time around was a Disney based theme around my own characters. So I thought about it a lot and I think that I am going to go with one of my favorite animated movies and it's going to be The Little Mermaid. So in The Little Mermaid there's one scene that just stands out to me and I think that's what I'm going to go with. It's the scene where Ariel is popping out of the water and she's like singing at the time and she's just like perched over the rock you know she's just like has her chest out and She's just like, there's like a wave crashing in the background and everything. So it's like, and there's like a wave. But the rock isn't that high. The rock is like right here. And then I will just make it playful and, you know, just proceed from there. Well, this video is going to be a little different than any other video that I've done, uh, especially because I want to make it a little bit more special, a little bit more in-depth than the normal videos that I do for my YouTube videos. You know, you guys are, you know, supporting my channels, and this is my way of giving back to you guys. So... We're going to go about, you know, doing the illustration and, and I'm just going to, you know, like first I'm just going to talk a little bit about like why I like The Little Mermaid because you guys chose the theme and I thought it was really, really cool that you guys chose the Disney one. And you guys also chose the anime ones and the Star Wars ones. I think everybody voted a little bit on both. Oh, so I want to make sure that everybody is going to get something that they like. So. This first video will be a Little Mermaid one, or a Disney one, and then the next video that I do, the, I think the next one that was voted on the most was an anime theme. So I'm going to go ahead and do an anime theme for that one. That'll be our second video. Like right now, you guys are the OGs. You guys are the very first people that actually help support what I do. So I want to make sure that all of you are taken care of and you guys all know that you guys are valued. And I'm also looking forward to sending like prints out and stuff like that. Uh, it's going to be one of the few like times that I actually offer printing and, you know, shipping and all that stuff. 
because I normally don't do it because it's just a little bit of a hassle, making sure that I get everything printed and making sure that like everything gets sent out on time and stuff. But I honestly, I don't mind. I'm looking forward to actually opening up a shop and, you know, starting my blog and, ah, man, like there's so much stuff that I want to, you know, like actually start getting done. I think I made her booty a little too big. As you can see right now, I am just going around the image and making sure that my proportions are right. And I literally, like yesterday, I just made a video on a female anatomy. So if you guys are interested in figuring out a little bit more about that, uh, I suggest you guys go check out the YouTube channel and it gives you a little bit more of an idea of how I approach it. Not necessarily saying that it's like the best way to approach it, but it's definitely a way that it makes sense to me. And therefore, it might make sense to you guys as well. You never know. So... And it's very interesting uh, talking at the same time as you're drawing. Not necessarily because it's distracting, not because it's a little, it's more difficult or anything like that. Uh, because I normally go out and draw with friends all the time and, you know, I'm doing the same thing. I'm just answering questions. I'm just, you know, giving advice and stuff like that as is whenever I go draw with other people. But what's interesting is just making sure that it's enjoyable content <laughs> and not just me rambling on over and over and over. I have a bad tendency of doing that. If you guys and girls like go back and look through my YouTube video history and you guys have looked at all my other like older videos, you'll realize that I used to just go off script and just talk for ever and not really like end up with a coherent sentence like very often uh, eventually I would just always come back on track but it was always a pain in the butt because I would just you know talk about like a million other things other than the topic I can and then at the end of the video I'm like oh my god like what did I do Okay, and just pay attention to the fact that I am roughing this out incredibly rough. Like, I am not really concerned with, like, any detail at this point, because I need to make sure that the angles that I have set up are proper and that they look good. In this case, we're dealing with a mermaid tail, but it's no different than dealing with just a normal female body. You got to make sure that all the elements are there. So we have our rib cage, uh, the boobies, the arms, you know, leaning back, making sure that she's angling properly. Then we have the hips. And in this case, right here I have to make sure that it's not too far down and then it goes into the pelvis and this is where the little you know like little flappy things from her tail would be so this would they would curve around right here okay we have that. Okay. And this is very, very, very rough. Like it's not, I'm gonna at least take like maybe like one or two passes. Normally it's super, one, super rough like this, right? And then it goes into 
the next level, which would be like just clean refinement of the line work. So going in, cleaning it up a little bit and making sure that uh, that little like basic details are there. And then the next step would be to clean up the line work or inking as some of you guys might call it. Okay, I think the head is still a little bit too big. So we're gonna select that all and we're gonna shrink it down a little bit and reposition. There you go. I think that's a little bit better. Oh, okay. So now we have that. We have the basic pose for her, and which is perfectly fine. I have the water up. Splashing all over the place. And the water is going to be done with just colors in the background. And then we are going <laughs> to draw my favorite little character, Archie. I uh, gotta make sure I draw them. It's gonna be right here. The other one that I considered was Lilo and Stitch, uh, but I already drew a Lilo like uh, Stitch with Archie for a commission that somebody wanted. Uh, so I thought it would be like almost cheating if I did it. So I wanted to go with something a little bit different. And you guys can find out how to draw Archie yourselves with from another video that I did. I think it was like Monday's video or Tuesday's video. I do them on Mondays and then post them on Tuesdays. So you guys can go like go and check that one out if you guys are interested. <laughs> okay, okay, I think I know what I want to do with them. I'm going to move them this way. And he's gonna be touching his mermaid, her mermaid butt. Let's move it right here, and she's gonna be like, "What?" Yes, play transformation. He's gonna be touching her booty. And he's gonna be getting eaten by a fish. <laughs> it's like a bass or something like that. It's going to be eating him. He's going to be touching her butt or her, f her fishy parts. She doesn't necessarily have a butt, I guess. He's going to be like, yay. Because Archie is a little pervert. Okay, what do we do with the other hand? Gonna make sure to balance the weight around. There you go. <laughs> it kind of looks like Magikarp. <laughs> Oh, he's just going to be like super happy. All right. I'm liking this so far. See, when it comes down to eyes and facial expressions, you got to make sure that you get it, like you take the time to actually set it up properly. 
Because even a small, like, line, like, not in the right place can, can give you a completely different expression. So you have to make sure that you take the time to actually draw things properly. <laughs> there you go. And then we have this, we have her, we have the general body of her. I think it's pretty set up properly. Uh, I think this arm needs a little bit more refinement, so let's get rid of it. So we have this, and then we have... There we go. That's a little bit better, a little bit more structured, and now we can go into her actual face. Start roughing it out. Ariel has like little sideburns. We're gonna make sure that she's looking this way, but she, instead of like singing, she's just gonna be like, what? So the facial expression has to be very, very accurate. Uh, you got to make sure that we get the details right. And we might have to switch a little bit of the body positioning to make sure that it reflects that she's surprised as well. So first things first, make sure we allocate where the features are going to be. based on the angle of her head and how it's looking it would be probably something around these lines and just like before where right now we're just doing basic detail we're not really worried so much about you know all the little details that come along with it we just want to make sure that we get the basic information down. And once we have a proper positioning of everything, like eyelashes, mouth, nose, then we can go ahead and change the facial expression properly to make sure that it looks like exactly what we want. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's move this up a little. So when it comes down to like faces, I like to give like the little superhero mask. And that helps me identify where the eyebrows would have to go, where a little indent right here is supposed to go from the eyebrow muscle and the brow going into the cheekbone and then it gives me an idea of where the nose is supposed to be and if the head is a little too big or not in this case I think the jaw might be a little too small like a little too big like this is way too far down but before I make sure that that's the case, I gotta make sure. Just draw it in and then adjust accordingly. So we have our nose. And then. Ooh. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let's see if it was like, oh. <laughs> let's see. Hold on. And the actual movie poster, like she's just singing in her mouth, is like. Curves around. And then goes back down with her tongue. Let's get rid of those eyes. So this is what the mouth looks like in the actual poster. And I guess in this case, the head shape would be more like this. And the ear would be a little bit higher. Head is still a little bit too big for the body, though. So, I'm gonna grab it all, scale it down, adjust it. That looks a little bit better. Okay. There we go. Whoa. Hold on. Um, I don't like the nose like that. I'm going to make it a little bit more puckered up. And with noses, I like to make little like diamonds. That way you can identify where the front and the bottom and everything is. Way. Perfect. So, my favorite Disney movie is probably Lilo and Stitch. Uh, the Little Mermaid is up there, like very high up there, but it's definitely Lilo and Stitch. Lilo and Stitch, like, I mean, I, I just released a video saying like all my favorite artists and the top one was Chris Sanders, so it shouldn't be that big of a surprise that the one that he designed is my favorite. <laughs> there you go, that's fine. Okay, so we have her butt getting slapped by Archie. Let's make her hair a little bit more majestic.
Okay. So we have mermaid, we have a little fish. Uh, most of the wave is going to take up most of the little splashing. It's going to take up most of the background. But behind the background, there's going to be like, you know, some muggy colored sky. Because we're trying to represent that same scene. And I believe that scene happens at nighttime. Okay. So now that we have this done, let me just refine a couple really small details. I noticed that the eye on one side was a little bit bigger, so I have to make sure to even that out. Make sure that the eye, like I was saying before, like very, very slight subtleties in the eye. Like if this was a little bit smaller, it gives you a complete, like if it's brought down a little bit, if I was like this, it gives you a really very different look than having the eye completely open. Uh, it's just very small subtleties that like they come to you in time and you know you eventually start figuring all this stuff out as you're drawing it but it's really helpful to just know it off the bat like have somebody point it out so you don't make those mistakes when you're drawing. Okay that's better. Uh, let's see. Make sure that the angle on the nose is proper. Like she's looking down. So you would see a little bit of the nose, like from underneath. Going into the lip. Okay, and then just an indication of where the shading is going to be. Okay, and all right, so we have the general idea of what our image is going to be. So from this point on. we can go in and start refining the actual details. And we're gonna go in and do another layer. Wanna make sure that the hair flows properly before I go in and clean it up. Okay, so we have the hair, we have Archie, we have the body. Let's make sure the body looks good before. Uh, the shoulder needs to go up a little bit more on this side. This one's pretty straight, so let's make this one stylized as well. Uh, the hand might be a little too long here, so we're going to bring it up a little bit. There you go. And these are all the thoughts that go in my head as I'm drawing something. Anything, really. Uh, it's just making sure, like, balancing everything out, making sure that everything's nice and clean, making sure that you're not over-detailizing anything. You know, it's just little tiny things like that that make a world of difference. Oh, and she has our little, like, shells going on in her boobies the arm digs in the arm leads into the breasts okay and then 
which has, I guess, they're kind of like pushed together, more so by the by the seashells. That. Let me grab them and you put them a little closer together to create a little bit of cleavage. And this is probably an older Little Mermaid, <laughs> a little bit more developed Little Mermaid than the one in the Disney movies. Uh, let's just assume that this is like her at like 23. <laughs> you know, because isn't Ariel like 14 in the actual movie? It's like she's super young. Okay. When you create cleavage, just make sure to give a little indication of. I think you don't have to draw the whole roundness of the boob. Okay, and it's a strap. Then it goes around. Okay. Let's enhance the back arch a little bit more. That'll be a little too much. There you go. That should be fine. Okay, 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 okay. That works, that works. Looks a little bit better. The only signature thing. And then she's going to be looking at Booby. Booby is a little different character I have. I mention him a lot. Uh, he appears in a lot of my art. And it's normally the base mood that I am in at any given point. And since right now I am ecstatic, I'm like super happy because I'm actually finally doing a video for, you know, Patreon. I'm just going to make him super happy. All right. Okay, I think we have our base, you know, properly done. Now we can go in and start adding the cleaner line work. So we're going to make a new layer. We are going to make this one drop a little bit in opacity. And it's still just going to be our template, but this is going to be just a cleaner line template that we set up. We're going to go back in with just black line work. And we're going to start cleaning up a little bit of the image. Not necessarily keeping it like so super, super clean. We'll wait for our final line work for this. This is just so we have a better understanding of all the detail that's going to go into it. And in some cases, you can actually use this the step as part of your cleaner line work so you don't have to ink everything after this you already have you're going to have a little bit of already inked and that really depends on the level of cleanliness that you have with your line work at first there's some people that can go in and just do like super clean line work right off the bat uh, fortunately that's not me i work with really 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 heavy lines and then I go in and do everything clean either with Adobe Illustrator or I do it with with Manga Studio or I gotta stop calling it Manga Studio Clip Studio Paint Pro guys Clip Studio Paint Pro uh, I call it Manga Studio because before they changed their name it was Manga Studio and I used it for quite a while as Manga Studio Okay, for example, in this case, I think I might be able to use the eyes that I just drew as the finished line work. Okay. 
Mm. Where did I... It seems like my line work isn't that dirty from underneath, so I might actually just use this as a as a cleanup layer. But I do like using the vector line work for cleaning up my lines. So I'm just going to make a new layer with the vector line work. This is an option that you have in Manga Studio. The difference is that with, for example, the vector line work, you can go in later on and then adjust it if necessary, right? And you can move it around, you can, you know, do all that stuff on a normal vector layer, on a normal non-vector layer, which are called raster layers, uh, you just get the line work and that's it. In this one, you get the line work, you can edit it, you can change the stabilization, which means that it's smoother, you know, if you want to choose it like that. And it comes down, like, mostly for the erasing. Let's say you have that. It allows you to just set an option so you can just erase anything overlapping. So that's the reason that I like it. Because then I can draw through the objects and it still looks good. Okay. All right. Now we can just play around with the vector layer. Okay. There we go. Okay. Details. When it comes down to lips, you got to make sure that you don't just keep them nice and flat. Make sure that you are doing, like, volume to it. And by volume, I mean not flat shapes and you got to make sure you add a little bit of roundness to it like and that's created by overlapping shapes for example this little line right here you know that little tiny indication of an overlap generates a lot of volume for it and I don't like that line let's make sure that one's nice and clean Disney has a very interesting way of drawing mouths. Uh, Disney, you know, like style guides in general. It's like one just single shape. Uh, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Seeing the reference and actually like trying to imitate it is interesting. Because I have my own different way of doing mouths, and it's uh, considerably different. <laughs> but it's in a, it's always good to learn how to do things in a different way. So don't ever be afraid to venture out outside of your comfort zone. And in this case, I, you would probably see some of our teeth, like, but it's gonna be from this angle. What angle would you see them from? Uh, that looks. That looks fine. You can take the time to actually fill in all the parts that are going to be black. That way you don't have to do it later. Little tiny overlapping shape right there to make sure that it looks like it has volume on that side. Not completely certain I like that little section right there. I want it to be a little bit plumper. There you go. That's a little bit better. You have a little tiny line to indicate where the the chin is. round out some of those edges, let's zoom out, 
There you go, it's looking good. Now we can go back in and start doing some of the, see, in this case scenario, look at how convenient it is to have the vector tool. I just click on the little parts that are overlapping and then it goes away. With the hair, it's gonna be very similar. So we have those lines, boom, done. <laughs> So you can see some of the benefits from being able to use a vector tool. Mm -hmm. Let's see here, that's too big, there you go. Erase. Okay. Man, I should really like see about getting a sponsorship by, by Clip Studio Paint. Uh, that'd be freaking amazing. Imagine if I could like get all those things at like super cheap discounts and make sure that you guys could like buy it like super cheap. That'd be really cool. Nope. And if you've ever dealt with digital inking, you'll realize that it takes a while to get used to actually getting the proper lines. And it's sometimes very hard to get like super nice curved line work. And it's mostly because everybody has like, for example, I'm right-handed. So most of my lines go down in this direction. Like whenever I'm inking, I hardly ever push up. It's always down down so if i'm curving something i have to like make sure that i'm like drawing it properly from the sides if i'm pushing so i'm going this direction it just makes things a little bit more difficult to actually keep consistent like i like to think of it that everybody has one line that they're really good with and when it comes down to digital inking that's what you have to stick to And I don't think the program is actually recognizing the fact that I'm like rotating my screen. <laughs> Whenever you guys see me like draw in a different direction, it's probably because I'm drawing, I'm rotating the screen like my Cintiq in order to be able to get those lines. Undo. Okay, let's do this one. And it's a lot of trial and error. You will f find that out whenever you're doing anything, anything with a computer, you will find out that a bunch of it is a lot of trial and error. Uh, you guys will make the undo button your new favorite friend because you will need them. Mm -hmm. The neck, see right here, that's very interesting. Like you gotta remember that the neck is not just some weird attachment connected to the neck, uh, to the head. It, you have to give it a little bit of volume. The, just making this little indication line right there is going to make it so it has a little bit more depth. And then you can proceed by making the line work or you give it slight shading underneath to give it even more depth. And then if you want to go in and add extra more detail and more depth, you got to remember that there's several muscles inside the neck. So the muscles in itself they are something like this. You have the, you know, the middle part, no, it's like the trachea, I think, and then you have two lat muscles. You can just go ahead and feel your own muscles right now. And they kind of work like this, and they connect to where the clavicle is. But you don't have to go in and draw all of that. So we're gonna give an indication of the, of the clavicle. And this normally points to where your shoulders are gonna be. And then we're just gonna Add two 
little, uh, just one, just one line. Just give that one. And that's going to provide it a lot more depth. Once again, it's all about depth. It's all about making sure that your line work looks super clean and that even the slightest overlapping shapes or la overlapping lines provide you with like the most detail ever. So with shoulders, you know, I normally tend to follow the clavicle. See, this is what's, that was me trying to push a line instead of pulling it. So we're going to go this way. Okay, and then from here, it connects to the neckline. Cool. Same thing here. We got to make sure that the overlapping shape is there. And then we go into the shoulder. I'm liking this shoulder more than this one, so we're going to get rid of that. I'm just going to redo it. Mm -hmm. better. Oh, it's a little bit better. We'll adjust it if we need to down the line. So right here, it's a curvature. Here's where the shoulder would be into the bicep. So you got to make sure to add a little bit of indication of that. So we have our bicep digging into where the skin connects the end of the bicep. We can just do a little indication like that into the fore. Right? So now we have our arm. We're going to give it Right here, we're going to give a little, tiny bit of a curve so it looks like her bathing suit or her shells are digging into her body a little bit. Just a little tiny bit. That little tiny, little tiny curve will help it look a little bit more, like more correct. Like your eye will not no normally pick it. Like, we won't automatically know that the detail is there, but it'll read a little bit better when you're actually looking at the final product. Nope, I don't like that. I think it should be just one nice smooth line. Or one line for the ch chest and then one line for the bottom part that's fine just a tiny tiny overlapping shape so it reads a little bit better i'm going to give a small indication of where the rib cage uh, ends up i just realized here that Let's bring this up. This breast is a little bit smaller, so you got to make sure to adjust it first. It's still a little bit smaller. There you go. Okay. I see a shape I shouldn't have right there. Okay color pick the look you don't want like a lot of different lines uh, like of different color blacks so you got to make sure to color pick what you've used okay so this one part is interesting because if you follow the rib cage it would end up something like this right and then the ab muscles would come in right underneath that so how do you make that work and it comes down to overlapping shapes well it would mean that the abs dig in, or they come in a little bit from the rib cage, right? So they would come out like that, and then you would just very, very lightly show your image like that. At least 
I think that's the way that I would approach it. Get rid of that. Belly button. Do f I mean, would a fish, with a, would a mermaid have a belly button? I'm not exactly sure how mermaids, like, breed. Hmm, hold on. Starting to think that just having a line like this would be better. No, I like it more like that. Okay, this will be followed all the way through. Erasing the excess. Then we have the other arm, the same thing. Bicep digs into the forearm and then the forearm comes around into the palm of the hand. Just make sure that it's about the same size as the other one. Mm, might be a little too big. Uh, there you go. It's a little better. Okay. Let's move back up. Getting all the little details. I'm gonna give her a little bit indication of abs. Just that one little line will provide you some information about that. Then we're gonna go into her rock. Let's make the brush a little bit bigger for that. In this case, I'm making the rock go like this because it's just going to bring back your... <laughs> it's a composition thing. So if I make it like this and then the waves slightly coming this way, then it's going to bring your eye back to her, which will bring you back to him, which will bring you back to her. So it'll just keep your eye coming back over and over and over. And all that is part of composition. Okay, we will add all the detail later. Okay, with the hand, the forearm leads into the little, you know, bones in your palm or in your wrist. And then you would have your thumb and the fingers are going into the distance on this side, so it would look something like that. And then there's this, this side, and you see a little bit more of the hand, so we can start with the fingers. into the palm and into the thumb. Okay. We have our hand. Cool. It's looking good, looking good. Okay, so let's continue this line through. Actually, let's redo that line. Okay. And then her fish tail, would, her fish body would continue there. And then this would close off the top part. Uh, I don't know. Do I want it curving in or do I want it curving out? That might be better. Oh, there you go. 
Okay. Now that would curve in like that, and this one would curve in like that. For the most part, I think we got her body down. Now let's work on her seashells. And this is normally me when I'm drawing by myself, when I'm not giving commentary or when I'm not making videos. It's normally like me just humming over and over like... Either that or I'm just watching movies at the same time. Okay, so in this case, I can't find the angle that I want properly, so I'm going to rotate the entire canvas so I can get that proper line work. There you go. There you go. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay. You might wonder why I'm not using just the, the circle tools. And it's because I don't want everything to look perfect. Uh, I don't necessarily like using completely symmetrical tools either. Just mostly because I believe that having a little bit of asymmetry in your designs like makes things look a lot better. Like, symmetry is completely overrated. If you need to actually go in and then transform things, there's several different tools that you can use to make sure that everything looks the way you want. In this case, I'm using the mesh transformation combined with just the scaling tool. And it gives me the end result that I want. And whatever I need to adjust, I can adjust later down the line. Because you wouldn't find perfectly round seashells anyways. Like, like that wouldn't happen in nature, so I'm pretty sure that you wouldn't have perfectly round seashells. Anyways. And at this point I can go in and do little tiny details that I know I'm gonna add in there later anyways. reset this back to my normal positioning, make sure that everything looks fine. It seems like this side is a little bit smaller than the other side, so we're going to select it and we're going to do the same mesh transformation and we are going to adjust it so it looks perfectly fine. And this is the beauty of actual design programs. More than anything, it allows you to make mistakes and fix them 
more so than traditional media. And, you know, I'm a big fan of just painting and all that stuff too, but having the ability to be able to adjust anything on the fly is amazing. <laughs> if you've never really tried using digital media, uh, for example, the reason that I use this program, it's because it's super cheap and anybody can, you know, get into it and anybody can learn it. And it's, there's like a bunch of tutorials and if you get it on sale, it's literally like just like 15 bucks as opposed to, for example, like the next program that would be highly regarded as one of the most used would be Photoshop. And for that one, uh, that one runs you like either a monthly subscription that you have to pay. It's like $30, $40 a month. Or you have to like straight up buy it, which costs an arm and a leg. It's like, I think it's not even several hundred. I think it's like close to a couple thousand. Okay. I realize here that there's some lines that are off. If I'm following this structure, it would be right there, right? So the middle of her rib cage would be right there. So it's a little bit off from what I drew, but it's fine. It's just a little indication. And maybe I'll shift the belly button over a little bit too. There you go. Okay, let's continue with the hair. It's easier to draw a smooth line if you just draw through everything. And then just erase the parts you don't need. Sometimes it's a little harder, especially with this vector tool line, but it's worth it. Okay. Okay. Her hair is super flowy, so it's really easy to just draw the line work. Oh. Okay, we can add loose hairs down the line. We just have to make sure that we have everything set up properly first. Yeah, that works too. Okay. All right, that works, that works, that works. Looking good, looking good. Gonna go into her eyes. Get a significantly smaller brush. To me, the eyes are probably some of the most important parts when it comes down to designing anything. Because they say so much about the character. Pretty close. Yeah. Alright, that works. I think for the most part, our aerial is done. So we can go back and go into the other characters. Uh, Booby is pretty simple. Thicken the lines that you need. Make sure that all the line work is relatively even.
perfect and fill in the areas that are going to be black and a little movement there you go so now we have we oh we forgot the eyebrows uh, eyebrows would connect where the line mark for the nose bridge is and just go all the way around toward the eyes. And now we just keep on. Make sure to get a nice look to them. Uh, if they're, you know, the character has thick eyebrows, make sure it has thick eyebrows. If it doesn't make sure to keep in mind that there's the eyebrow line right here you know there's like a muscle that goes around your eyebrows if they're very pronounced or if they're like angry if your character is upset it would bring that and then you'd have to show a little indication of the brow line in order to be able to to make it look a little bit more like it's upset or like it just make it look a little bit better So we have her, uh, for the most part, all her details are done. Uh, we'll go in later and start adding little tiny other details that we might need. But for right now, I think that's good. Uh, this line right here, since it would, the way it is right now, it would probably dig into her crotch. I think that would be better not to have to make this too R-rated. Okay, so we have her, we have Booby, and then we can move on to Archie. Archie is also pretty simple to draw. I normally like to start with the ears or the sides of the face if I'm just inking them. Mm -hmm. Has three tufts of hair into the roundness of the head. Once again, the vector tool coming in handy. Okay. I do this little line to indicate the roundness of the ear from the other side. Hair coming in right there. Make sure that all your line work is clean, that there's no overlapping shapes if you don't want them. Then we can move on to this side of the face. Mm, actually, no, let's, let's draw the mouth first. Okay. A little thing. Get rid of all the lapping shapes you don't need and then fill in the black. So I'm very curious. Uh, I was very, very uncertain as to what type of videos you guys would want to see. Uh, I didn't know if to go with uh, an instructional 
like type of videos like how to make money with your artwork or how to you know like work in a certain program or anything like that but i figured that since you guys were voting on like themes would be better just to you know have like a video commentary like this where i talk and you know give you guys my thought process as i go about drawing but another thing that we could do for future you know future ones is that I'll tell you guys exactly what day I'm going to be doing the video and I'll just set up like a Google Hangout or something I don't know like some sort of like chat feature so you guys could just ask me questions and talk with me while we do the videos so that way you know you guys are more engaged if you guys have time to be able to you know join in you guys can, you know, just ask away and, you know, fulfill anything you guys want to get out of the experience. I think that would be really cool. Uh, I think that would be like uh, a good compromise. That way, you know, you guys get to ask anything you want and anybody in any tier would be able to join in. So, I mean... I think anybody that's in the tier that you guys can ask like questions. I think it's like the two dollar and up one, right? Um, you guys can no oh, any people that can see this video would be able to vote. So I think it's like the two dollar tier and up would be able to you know make sure to ask anything. But I think all of you guys are already signed up for that, <laughs> so it wouldn't exclude any of you. But that way you guys would be able to. Keep me company, first of all, which would be kind of nice, you know, because, you know, standing, like, sitting here for a couple hours, just, you know, talking to a microphone is, it's kind of weird. Uh, I've never gotten used to the fact that, you know, I talk to a mic. <laughs> I just don't, like, I, I always feel weird. I mean, I've gotten a little bit more used to it, but... That doesn't take away the fact that, it, like, it just feels weird. So it would be nice to have, like, more people involved in the process. So let me, get, like, just, you know, leave a comment and let me know if that's something that you guys would actually enjoy. Uh, I want to make sure that everything I do for this, you know, Patreon is like going to reflect back and make to make sure that you guys are getting something really cool out of it. Uh, I don't want to be one of those channels or one of those Patreons where the artist does what the fuck he wants and, you know, he just expects everybody to be okay with it. No, like I, that's never been the case for me. Uh, I don't want to just, you know, like post any random stuff and then expect you guys to to pay for me to do you know all that and that's not how i see things working out the way that i see things going is that's why i implemented the voting system uh a little bit of compromise from each way so if i feel like drawing my original characters that week then we can set up something that you guys enjoy and then i go ahead and draw something based you know on something i like based on something you guys voted on if that makes any sense at all. But, of course, you guys will be in control. So, if you guys want more instructional videos, hey, I'm more than happy to do those as well. Uh, they have absolutely no issue. I just wanted to make sure that I distinguish the stuff that I do with you guys as opposed to the stuff that I do on YouTube or any other platform. You know, you guys are special. You guys get a little bit cooler stuff. So, I just want to make sure that you guys are happy with the content that I'm creating. So you guys continue supporting me and so I can actually continue doing more content for everybody. That's the whole point. Okay, so he's touching a fish booty. The fish is eating him. Wow. Go. 
and let's draw his mask. Also, if you guys prefer like time lapse illustrations with just you know talking over, so you guys don't have to sit there for like two hours. Um, I mean that could be worked out as well. I just want like I just want to make sure you guys are happy with what I provide. So I'm gonna like require your input. You know, if you guys you know want to just shout out anything you guys would like to see more of what you guys would like to you know actually receive uh, I'm open to suggestions and there's no wrong answer if you guys want like different tiers like maybe like a t-shirt tier or you know with a graphic from each month if you guys want one where it's like I send you guys an original drawing I don't know like, I, I honestly have no idea. Um, I'm not going into this completely blind, but I definitely am very concerned with making sure that you guys get, like, stuff that you guys are actually going to enjoy. Like, I did a bunch of research before I even started, you know, my Patreon. And... I. A lot of the times I found out that the artists just don't give a shit. Like, they just really don't care. Like, they they see this as a way to just make money. And if you guys have ever, 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 ever followed, like, my path, <laughs> it, it's never been about just making money. Like, for me, it's about leaving a legacy and making sure that everything that you do creates an impact on other people in a positive way. That's how I see myself. That's how I see myself, you know, like getting better. That's how I see myself, you know, like helping the community. That's my way to give back all that stuff. Alright, so we have Archie, <laughs> gonna have the fish, I hate drawing circles in digital programs, I hate them, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, this is such a pain in the ass because I'm like a perfectionist. <laughs> Let's see, is this better? Oh, that helps. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like guys like that more. Okay. Last thing for Marchi is his little face mask. It's more like a, almost like a heart shape that goes around his eyes. Gotta rotate the canvas to make sure that I have a proper line work. Okay, go back to our regular one. Let's see. So what else do we need from here on out? Can we have, well, I don't know what that is. I think we have the general gist of everything. But as you can see, some of the line work is thicker than others. So we have to go back in and fix that. We have to make sure that all the line work is consistent. Not everything has to be the same width, but we have to consider that our all our thick to thin line work. And what I mean by that is that the parts where the light, if I sample this way, right? We have the light coming this way. 
the lines at the top should be a little bit thinner than the lines in the bottom. And that's how you give an indication of light without having to actually draw the shadows. Most comic book artists do this just naturally, but it's something that you have to keep in mind when you're doing your designs. Okay, so we're just gonna go in and do that. And then we're gonna proceed from there to coloring and doing final details. Like, you know, lighting and background and all that stuff. But, you know, we're on a good path. Uh, I mean, it has been... Hopefully the video is just not too long for you guys. I'll leave little time, like time codes on the bottom to make sure that you guys can skip to like different parts of the drawing. I'll set it up from like lighting to, or from like all the way from sketching to inking to coloring and then final details. And you guys can just skip around if you guys don't feel like, you know, listening to me talk for two hours. Okay. All right. Okay, so as we continue just going through the drawing and making sure that our line work is properly like weighted, we can also start, you know, noticing little tiny details that we might want to change. For example, here I realized that this little part would probably end up, if we drew through it, it's not lining up completely with this one. So I might just adjust it. And it's little tiny details like that that make or break a drawing. So now you can probably imagine it going all the way around. Okay. Uh, another little detail that I noticed is Archie's little belly. So his belly would go like here, and then you'd probably see a little indication of where his feet would start. And that gives it a little bit more depth. Remember guys, depth is the name of the game. Uh, you can start seeing little tiny details like overlapping lines you don't want in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, this little line, I'm going to make it so it doesn't touch the edge since that's going to be a slightly transparent part of her. We don't want, you know, solid lines in there. Okay, I can see that there's a tiny bit of overlap right there. I'm going to give a little bit more shadow because there would be like core shadows here. There would be like core shadows on this side as well because it's the lighting is hitting it right there. Uh, I'm not necessarily liking this part. Maybe making it come in instead. There you go. It's a little bit better. Let's see what else. Little core shadows. So it looks like there's the fingers are laying on top of something. Okay. That works, that works. Oh. So let's see. We're just taking a second and making a secondary look through everything, making sure that all our line work is proper, that we're not missing any heavy details, anything that we can't fix later on. And I guess we could always go back and change things as we go, but. If you get it done the first time around, you don't have to worry too much about having to go back and doing details. Uh, in this case, I think I'm going to add uh, fingernails. Let's see. 
Mm -hmm. Little fingernails. Just little tiny lines where the knuckles would go is enough to give a little indication and gives it a little bit of geometry to the design. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm looking through everything, just making sure that everything is set up properly. And you have to, oh, let's give this guy like a fin. And the waves are going to be really fun uh, because it has like a very splashy look to it, but it has to be done properly. So I'm going to use, not necessarily, I'm just going to use the actual, like a screenshot of that image as a reference for the colors, not necessarily for anything else, just for the colors, because the color plays like its own important role when it comes down to designs. Okay, some gills for the fishy. Um, it'll be a little bit of a shadow from his lip curling around. Let's see, let's see. And I'm gonna give I curse like fishy parts scales and stuff, but it's going to be done with the actual color instead of you know worrying about doing it like on the fly. Let's give the rock a little bit of depth by adding little surfaces that it might have. Maybe little cracks just to make sure it looks like a three-dimensional object and not just a big blob okay doesn't have to be too heavy on the detail and I think after this I think we're set and I think we can actually start coloring so let's look up what Ariel looks like and she has super bright red hair and I kind of want to use a screenshot just so I can get the colors the exact colors that they are so we have like a little tiny image okay I'm gonna make that there I'm gonna just leave that as a reference in the top ah okay so we're going to leave that there and we are going to just color pick the colors, the basic colors, and then we're going to use those to keep on going with our design. And the, mostly the reason that I do it like this is because in case you guys weren't very familiar with me and everything, I am colorblind. So um, skin tones especially are especially hard to do uh, as well as greens and like reds and that's pretty much everything that this character has <laughs> so uh, that's why I'm kind of using this method <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is you have your line work layer right here and I believe this one's also part of the line work so we're gonna just combine those two together right so now we have both, you know, like all our line work in just one layer. We're going to make a layer underneath. And this one is going to be called colors. Or we're going to go color by color. So this one would be skin tones. Okay. This one's going to be called mm, line work layer, maybe. Line work. This one's just a sketch, so we can just call it sketch. And that's just the background color. For right now, we don't really care. As long as it's not white, it's fine. The reason I say that is because it's so much easier to be able to identify 
where the whites are going to go if you don't have a layer that's already white. Uh, sometimes when you just set it to white, you can't really, you end up noticing little mistakes that you do later on. But if you keep it like a light gray or anything like that, it's perfect. You don't have to worry about it too much. So the skin tone layer, and we're just going to fill in all the areas that have the skin tone. I like to just saturate everything. Everything, like just go over the lines and then later on go in and erase all the stuff outside the lines. Yeah, I mean, you can do like little selections with the line work and the magic wand tools and stuff like that, and then go back in and just erase the line work, but that sometimes leaves little artifacts and it's not incredibly precise. So I, even though it does take a little bit longer and, you know, some people out there might like cringe at the fact of going in and erasing, you know, just the outside edges of everything. Uh, I just find it nice and relaxing and it's nice and soothing for me. And then it also allows me to go back in and make sure that all the details are properly done. For example, right here, I can tell that there's a tiny bit of the line overlapping. So I go back to my line work layer, I erase it, and then you move on. The key to getting it to look really good, just any drawing in general, if you're working digitally or just working with your paints or just traditional paints and all that stuff, it's all about making sure that you double check, triple check, quadruple check every single part of your design. In this case, I'm using, I'm doing the coloring, but at the same time, I'm revising all the line work that I did before. So any little, for example, here again, there's a little tiny minuscule little speck that I probably wouldn't have guessed if I didn't go in and do it the way that I do. I know the whole point sometimes of art is getting it done quickly, but you have to, you have to get that balance between really fast work and really good looking work. If you are rushing through things and you're missing steps or you're making mistakes because you're going really fast, then, you know, what's the point you know like take the extra time and just make sure that everything's right i see a little tiny overlapping line that i don't want right here so I'll go back to my line work layer and erase it <clears throat> and i'm not a per not a complete perfectionist you know i don't really mind if little tiny details go like unnoticed here and there but the best, like for example, right here, there seems to be a little bit of black missing. You know, there's little open spots. Go back and erase it, then go back to my normal line work layer, high color layer, and just keep on going. The beauty of doing it like this is that you absolutely know for certain that you have all the you know color laid in exactly where you want it and maybe later on when you like set a background and like other things you might realize that little tiny specks of the skin tone went into the background and there's like a little part that you forgot to erase and then it's super simple because you can just go back to that one line work layer or that skin tone layer and then just erase the detail from there. In this case, we're going to erase anything that's not necessarily skin tone. And I'll show you guys later why I do it like this. It makes it so much easier to do all the shading and do, you know, all the other details that go within like certain aspects of it. And you'll see why. Just wait and see. It's all a process. 
See right here, I'm noticing two little spots inside the mouth where they're supposed to be black, like right here and right here. So you gotta go back to your line work layer, grab it, and then just fill it in. Okay, so that's looking good. Right here in the ear, there's a missing part. I forgot to fill in this little section right here. And then just double check everything as you go. There's another little tiny spot right here and right here that I wanna fill in. There you go. Ah, don't do that. Okay, no, I'm on my, see, I was in the wrong layer, so. Okay, 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 okay. Perfect, all right, seems good enough for now. The next color that we're gonna go with is Ariel's hair. So, we make a new layer. We're gonna put that underneath the skin tone. And the reason that I do that is You'll see in a second, uh, I most likely misplaced a couple little, you know, like spots here and there, and this helps you double check those again. So, hair. Just gonna name it hair. We're gonna color pick this color. I'm gonna saturate it a little bit more so it's nice and bright. Get a big brush and start coloring it in. So as you can see, right here, since it's underneath the skin layer, the, like all the skin tones are blocking. They're like on top. So if I turn this off, you can see that it's showing through. But if we turn that on, it's covering some of that red. And it makes it a lot faster to go in and color because you don't have to worry so much about being inside the lines. So the more like big areas that you cover like this, and then you have to go in and color all the little tiny details, it makes it easy because you can't really color outside the lines. And I like to keep colors that are similar together. So in this case, I'm gonna do her lips as well. And even though they're a slightly lighter tint of red, they're like more like a bright pink. So right now, boom, 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 boom. There you go. And let me show you guys why I do it like this. Because if you can tell, like right here, there is a little spot of skin tone that I forgot to erase. So I can go back in and get rid of those. There you go. So it's another, yet another way of double checking my work. Uh, one more right here. Boom, boom. Anywhere else, anywhere else. Right here, there you go, and here. Boom, and now we have her hair. Uh, we're gonna go in and do the same thing. We're just gonna erase all the stuff that's not necessary. And we will add shadows and stuff like that after we're done with setting all the base colors, all the flat colors, if you want to call it like that. If you want to go into animation terms, or I guess that's comic book terms too. Yeah, I definitely think that it would be a lot more fun if we set this up with a with a chat, uh, I honestly I, I I don't know how I would go about doing that. Uh, maybe because I still want to make it exclusive for you guys. I don't want it to be like like I want the people that are helping me and you know like supporting me to do these things to enjoy these benefits. And I know a lot of you are from you know, other countries and, you know, it's it's kind of hard to organize that. But I'm going to try to make an effort to make sure that you guys 
all get things that you like. And right here, I want to get rid of this. The tongue, even though the tongue is also technically pink, but it's going to be a lighter pink. So from here, I want to color pick that same color, make it a little bit lighter, not too much. There's this option right at the top, right here, right at the top of the layers, that one that says lock transparent pixels when you hover over it. Click it while you have that selected, and it's only going to color anything within that, like those pixels that you already have set down. So you can just, you know, color little tiny parts that, you know, you already did. Just make sure to turn it on and off as needed. And I noticed a couple, a couple little things within the eyeballs, but I can't see the detail anymore. Okay, so in, at this point, uh, the hair's pretty good. Uh, the lips and the tongue, well, they're going to be like different shades of pink. So just going to color it. And seeing as, you know, Archie also has a tongue, we're going to go in and color his tongue too. This is the same color. And I see a lot of little specks that I missed when I was coloring. Okay. Make sure to fix those as we go along. Okay, 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 okay. All right, the next color is going to be her tail. So we're gonna make a new layer. We're gonna put it underneath and we're gonna call this tail. We're gonna color pick the color here. We're gonna grab a bigger brush and we're gonna do the same thing. Just gonna saturate the color. Just gonna fill it in. And this little part is going to be a little tricky because it's semi-transparent. So we have to lay down the base color that she has right there and everything else is going to have to be like a 50% opacity like layer which what I mean by that is that it has to be turned down to 50% transparent uh, that way it shows a little bit of what's behind it but at the same time you can still see its color so you don't turn it down too much where it just gets irrelevant but you'll see what I mean uh, same thing you use this to double check your other layers as you can see, I forgot to erase a couple little things right here, right here. And that was a pretty small part. And the other color that's kind of similar, but not quite. No, we'll just make it a different layer. We're going to go into, hmm, what color should we do next? I think white would be the next color. So just whites in general. So in this case, it would be the eyes. The, um, I guess. The, oh, he has a tongue too. So we can go back here to the hair. Select it. We forgot booby. Booby has, has a tongue as well. But he has a lot of white. He has this, not lots of white, but he has three elements with white. Uh, in this case, I want to erase all this stuff inside because that's going to be a different color. I can tell that there's a little tiny spot right here. Triple checking everything, you know, just that's going to be coming back and forth, guys. That's just that's just how it work. Okay, so we have that. What else is white? So Archie's eyes are white. And I know a lot of different artists have different approaches when it comes down to coloring their stuff. Uh, a lot of them will straight up be like, avoid whites, period. And for the same, for the most part, 
I agree with them, but not at the same time. Uh, that sounds weird, right? But uh, it really depends on the way that you approach your lighting at the end. I like super, super bright colors. I just, it just, I just like it. It makes me like think that I'm actually coloring like a cell from an animation. So that's why I do it like that. And then later on, if it's needed or requested or anything like that, then I go in and I can change all the colors if necessary. Since I have all the whites in one layer, if they're not necessarily, they don't have to be white, I can just go back in later on and then just change by locking the transparency. I can just change all the colors in that same, all the colors that were the same color. <laughs> all the colors that were the same color. Uh, but I guess, I hope you understand what I mean. Mm, let's see. What's the next color? We're going to color Archie next. So, we're going to name this one Archie Base Color. And I'm going to use the same pink that... Archie is pink, by the way. Uh, maybe a little bit lighter pink. A tiny bit lighter. There you go. It's a little bit better. As before, you put it behind behind the other layers so you can first of all double check everything and make sure that you haven't like overdrawn over the other pieces two so you make sure that all the little gaps are filled and three so you have a reason to go back and edit and make sure well, not edit or just revise your work you know over and over to make sure that everything is properly done it's all checks and balances. Okay, let's go a little bit over the lines. Cool. Okay. Now we can just erase what we don't want. This part needs a little more color. Okay, this part too, I missed a little bit. So just so you guys know, just in preparation, I didn't know what you know what you guys would vote for. So I like had a few ideas of how to draw Archie uh, hitting on Princess Leia or if it was the Star Wars one if it was anime oh man like that could have gone in so many ways like it could have been like them as Naruto like or Dragon Ball Archie with like you know like some girl out there I don't know it, it, it could have been so fun uh, but I don't know if I already mentioned this, uh, but I will be like I will be alternating from the the poll that you guys had, and the next one I'm just gonna set the other ones that you guys voted, and then those are the ones you guys will vote on. So the next voting will be either anime, it'll be Star Wars, or I think I think Game of Thrones got one vote. So we will do that one and I'll like see what you guys want to proceed from there. Because I think those are really, really fun ones and I think it would be really fun to draw them. Okay, so that's good. The only section that I'm going to add two colors to the same I guess I did that with the red with the hair, but I'm going to do something similar to this one because his nose, it's a little bit brighter. It's a little bit whiter. 
So I like to just add that color since it's the only part of the body of his body that has that same color. I'm going to do that. And then I like to just blend it right away. That way I don't forget to do it later. And there you go. That's the only part that I like to do that with. Ah, oh, God, I guess his belly is the same color. So might as well just do that. Ugh. Going back on my own, like, words. <laughs> okay, there you go. Okay, anything else in those colors in the whole scene? I don't think so. So we're going to go with... This one is going to be Archie Dark Pink. Ah, sorry. Hit the mic. So we're going to grab that pink. We're going to darken it up a little bit. And then we're just going to fill it in. Do the same thing we did with all the other colors. And I know it's repetitive. I know that it's, you know, a drag having to do it like this. But the reasoning behind it, it's exactly the same that I told you guys. It's so you guys force yourselves to triple check your work. See how many little spots are like not quite where they're supposed to. And this is how you get your drawings to look professional. I mean, I guess professional is not necessarily the word I want to use because, you know, it's like being a professional artist doesn't mean you have to do things a certain way. Like it just doesn't. Not, no, no, not at all. Uh, you, there's so many different ways to be a professional artist. It's, it's not even funny. Uh, so maybe I shouldn't reference it like that. Uh, more so, I think it's more about making sure that your like artwork as as a at a presentable level. Uh, let's make sure I delete that. Perfect. And by a presentable level, I mean that if you got to think about it like this: if a client was looking at your work and they were going to pay you to create work for you like you're they're paying you to create work for them i'm missing a little part right here okay you have to make sure that you deliver work at a certain level of quality to make sure that they're not like upset or they don't you know give you shit whenever you try to get paid So double checking, triple checking, quadruple checking all your work and all your detail prevents that. It might take you a little bit longer to finish any piece of artwork, but at the same time, odds are you won't have to redo any work or revisions because everything will look perfect. Because you are a hundred percent certain that you saw the image like a trillion times. Hmm. Okay. okay, and just going back and forth through the layers, making sure that all the colors are where they're supposed to be. I guess that's a, this is a very different approach that I do with my sketchbook stuff. When it comes down to my sketchbook stuff, I kind of just draw it. <laughs> I just kind of go in and just design for whatever sake, because I'm not really concerned. Oh, that's missing white. I'm not really concerned with perfection when it comes down to my sketchbook. Uh, my sketchbook, and it's, oh, this is white too, just forgot. When it comes down to my sketchbook, I'm not too concerned with perfection, and I just want to get ideas down. When it comes down to actual work work, that's a different story. I'm a complete anal perfectionist. 
uh, I need to make sure that everything looks good, at least to a certain standard. Okay, so we have all the basic colors of Archie. Uh, let's do her bra so we can just get it out of the way. That, let's saturate it a little bit more because it's too dull. Just drag it. Bra. And same method. Boom, 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 boom. And every single time I lay down a new color, I can see, you know, little mistakes that I did. So it helps. So I can go back to your skin. Erase. Mm, oh, by the way, like uh, I never really explained how I'm gonna set up the files for you guys. I'm going. It's not gonna be necessarily just. Uh, it's not gonna be a Manga Studio file. I'm gonna set it up for you guys to be able to use it with different programs. So I'm anything that has layers should be able to open the files that I'm gonna give you. So it's going to be Photoshop files in design, oh, not in design. It's going to be Photoshop files, Manga Studio files, and I'm going to just provide a PDF that will open up layer, like a layer in other programs in case you have like Paint Studio Sci or, you know, you work in anything else. So I want to make sure that you guys can like go back and review or just play with the line work or you know, you guys can learn from seeing the line work that I did. And then you guys can play around, color it, do whatever you want. It w would be really fun to see what you guys come up with. Okay, so one more thing. Well, let's let's color the last little elements of this before I talk about this. So this is going to be booby. And booby is just yellow. Like, not super saturated yellow, but yellow. Okay, booby. See, right there I missed a little bit of white. I missed a little white right there. So I gotta go back to my whites, select it, color it in, and then I can go back to filling in the rest. Also here with the pinks, that was if the hair. So maybe I should just call that reds. Make it simple. And just name it by colors. Okay. Perfect. Not looking good. All right. So let's see. Um. I don't think we need her anymore. Yeah, I don't think we need her anymore. So we're just gonna turn that off. Okay, so one thing we have to consider. We want these guys, let's just make another layer real fast. We want these two, right? This guy and this guy to be the main focus of the design. That's why I have such bright saturated colors with them. We don't want the fish to be, like if we draw the fish bright yellow, it's going to stand out more than these guys, especially since we're going to have like a slightly less saturated, you know, kind of grayish, kind of greenish background with the waves. So, yeah, remember, the waves are going to go in there right there. So we have to make sure that the fish that we draw. And I'm just going to do all the detail for the fish in one layer because he's not that important. And I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have to go back and edit anything with the fish. So I'm going to choose like a very, very, like almost grayish tone for the fish, but with a little bit of color. So that way Archie stands out a lot. And we're going to go with uh, maybe, no, because the, oh, the waves are going to be like greenish. So maybe like this. Let's see what that looks like. And then we can, you know, adjust it if we need to. Mm. 
Okay, that's still too bright. We need to desaturate it more. There you go. That's a little bit better. But that mud muddies up this guy a little bit. So what you can do at this point too, you can just go into your menus and then there's like either in Photoshop you can control U or in here you can just go here and then choose, what is it? Hue, saturation and everything. So that gives you a little slider. I don't know if it's showing up in the actual screen though. And then you can switch back and forth between them. In this case, I think I'm going to go with this bluish tint to it. Just because it makes the pink pop so much more. Okay. Make sure that Archie is not going into the fish. Well, he is going into the fish, but I don't want his colors to pop into the fish. Okay. Then we're going to choose a lighter color for the lips. So just move this lighter up a little bit be too much mm. a little more, a little more. There you go. and we're gonna use that same color for the fin all right cool Erase the parts we don't need. Mm -hmm. Like I said, he's the the fish is literally just a secondary like element in there. So the less detail you have on it is going to not necessarily be a bad thing. It's just kind of like a, an aftermath hike. Like, you know, just laugh that you should get. And fish also have two different tones to their bodies. So we can do it two different ways. We are going to select that color with the magic wand tool. So we can only paint within those colors. And we're gonna either make the top darker So the belly is, you know, lighter. It doesn't have to be completely even either. Just leave it like that. And I think that works. Go back, refine details. There you go. I think that works. He's eating her and then he's touching her. Perfect. A uh, little last elements that we need to figure out. This is going to be the rock. And the rock is going to be like a, uh, like a very dark brown. Darker. Uh, maybe a little bit darker. So. There you go. make the brush a little bigger since we got to cover big areas and the rock will stand out a lot more when we add shadows uh, right now it just looks nice and flat it looks like a big pile of mud and that's not necessarily a good thing but not necessarily a bad thing either you'll, you'll realize when we add the actual lights to Skin tones. Okay, perfect, perfect. Go back to the rock. Erase all the details we don't want. So now we have that and 
next step up is going to be adding just the basic waves and then going from there and then after that we'll add shadows and stuff like that so waves and background so the waves are going to be really fun because we got to do them in two different layers we're going to do the waves in the background waves bg for background boom boom and this is going to establish the the shape of the waves so we're going to go with a very light uh, like a almost grayish green but maybe like there it's actually going to be very light gray and then let's draw some waves Might have to make this lighter. And one thing that I'm going to do with the waves is make sure that they're all converging and making the drawing point to this direction. Once again, that is more like a layout type of thing and making sure that, you know, everything flows properly. Waves don't have jag like jagged parts, so you got to make sure that everything's nice and rounded. Just going to fill it in. Let's fill it in. And water and waves are very interesting to draw. Uh, more so because there's more to it than just making it like white or like blue. It's, it's, you have to understand a little bit of the elements that go into a wave. Okay. Got to make sure that the background doesn't, you know, do a lot of tangents with your artwork. And by tangents, I mean like, for example here right if I made this just be right there it, it it creates conflict in this area so it just makes it visually unappealing <clears throat> so first we're gonna set the basic shape of all the big waves mm, remember to keep them uneven they're not necessarily like just big blobs you have to make sure that everything has like a chaotic feel to it and they all don't have to go the same direction either because it's water crashing into a rock yeah. okay that works for that side i think Feel free to erase things if you don't like them. Like, I think this is too much. Like, there's too big of a blob. Because I also want to leave a little bit of space for my background, like, behind the waves. So this is going to be the base color of the waves. And you'll see what I mean by that. Uh, we're going to add at least one more color. And it's going to be like the foam of the waves. And even though there's no, like, I don't have a set rule for, for drawing water. Uh, in this case, I'm just kind of adding little blobs and making sure there's no like sharp edges and then all the a little spray and stuff like that that's going to be added in with the white or with a lighter color but for example right here I'm they got to make sure that 
I double check everything again. It's uh, gonna fill that in anyways. Uh, go back to my skin tones. Erase little parts that I see that I forgot to erase before. Um, anything else? Um, no, I think I just missed. Oh, those are little areas. Okay, 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 okay. Everything good with the hair, everything good with... Oh, I forgot to fill in this area too. I go back to Archie's base color, erase this. Okay, so we have our basic waves, but I don't necessarily like the color. Like, I think it has to be like a more muted blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the selection one more time by clicking right here. And I'm going to try to color pick the color. I mean, I'm not going to assume that I'm like great at this. Um, there you go. That's a little bit better. We're going to change the background color to a darker, like a darker blue just because I know that I'm going to be using something similar to that later on. Probably darker still. Okay. It's not going to be that dark. It's going to have like gradients with colors and stuff. But for now, that, that should work. Okay. So now here comes the next layer when it comes down to the... And this is going to make it look more like water. So we're going to color pick that color. We're going to make this considerably lighter. It's still within, like, don't make it white. Just make it whiter than this is. So you just reduce the saturation a little bit. We're going to go with a bigger brush. That should be fine. Make a layer on top of your wave layer. We're going to call this wave foam. <laughs> and here we're going to the first step is going over different sections right here towards the edges, more so towards the edges, and indicate this needs to be lighter. Mm -hmm. Let's change that so far. It's not necessarily white, it's almost white, but not quite. And then this is where you start adding like all the little foam that like flows and flies off and it can just literally just kind of trace the outside of it and then just add all the water that's like piling on top and just flying you can make it as thick as you want and you can make it as skinny as you want as well you know it's it's all about creating a little bit of chaos and just making sure that you start giving it a little bit of depth. Once again, depth, depth, depth. And make sure that there's no like super sharp edges because that's, I don't know, it's, it's water. I mean, you, you never think of water as being like something that's super sharp, right? Like. Okay, as you can see, you start getting a little bit of feel. Like if you just start adding little strands like this with water flipping from it, you know, it's just little tiny details like this that make the drawing worth it. And I love that scene from The Little Mermaid. Like, I haven't seen the movie in so long. Uh, I need to go back and watch it. You know, I just imagine if waves were actually crashing against, you know, a rock, it would just be all over the place, right? Like it wouldn't be just like on the edges, it wouldn't be too clean, it would just be a little like water just 
flirting all over the place. Like I have like just as much of an idea of how water works than you guys. Uh, honestly, like I'm just, you know, playing a little bit with the elements right here. Right now I'm just going over the edges because, you know, I think that's the most important part. Making sure that it looks like water is just splashing all over the place. And then we'll go in and do some details inside to make it even, you know, more appealing. I don't think I've done a, like a Disney fan art like ever. Like this is really fun. Like <laughs> taking an element from like another movie or another like thing and then just incorporating your own characters in it. This is really fun. Like more so than I thought it was going to be. I'm actually going to love doing all these videos for you guys. It's like ugh, you have no idea. Okay. Okay, I think for now, I think this is a solid level. <laughs> Maybe this side needs more. It's not chaotic enough. Once again, you don't want to like overlap too much with the actual characters that are small. You want to keep the visual appeal right there. You don't want to like cover them up either, because they still have to be a focus of your of your drawing. Okay, so I think that's good for the splash. Now we're gonna have to work some inside. Like right now, it just looks kind of flat. So we're gonna have to add this same. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna have to add this same color to some elements inside. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add like little tiny splashes inside, but don't make them too like too organic. What I mean by that is no, it's not, not necessarily the right word. I don't know if organic is the right word, but you just have to make sure that they kind of make sense. Like they should be going in the same general flow of direction as the waves next to them because they're crashing as well. As you can see, it's starting to get a little bit more, you know, like more of the water feel that we want. And this is a very simple approach to it. Uh, more like an animation, like cheat guide to how to do it. Uh, I'm pretty sure that, you know, if you want to make like super hyper realistic water, there's like refractions and like all these other things that you have to like consider and man like like water is it's not easy to you know paint if you ever see somebody that can paint water like a pro woo, like more power to them like there's so much complexity when it comes down to that right, some Extra spots here and there. OK. 
Okay. All right. That's good. And then the next thing we're going to do, we're going to kind of cheat for the ultimate, like, background for everything. We, I already, like, I'm going to just look up real fast, uh, you know, nighttime sunset. Sunset ocean. And let's see what I get. Just want a large image of that, and we're just going to copy and paste it. But we're gonna do some stuff to it as well. So in this case, we have this one that's kind of cool. So we have this image. I'm just gonna copy and paste it. It's from our royalty-free site. You know, those sites are awesome <laughs> because you don't have to worry. Like if you have like a Getty Images, uh, you know, account, make use of it. We go right there. And then we're gonna blur it. We're going to go to Filters, Blur, Gaussian Blur. We're just going to blur it a little bit. Okay. It's going through the process of blurring. Perfect. And then we are going to go to Edit, Tonal Corrections again. And then we are going to play with the probably hue and saturation I might want it a little bit brighter than that uh, not quite no, that's too much mm, I'm just kind of sliding it back and forth guys there you go all right so now we have our layer with our background which sets up the scene really nicely and I mean unless you want to go in and paint the background uh, which I personally find it to be like the least appealing part of the whole thing uh, so I normally just if I'm not using it as a main focus of the back of the piece then I just do it like that so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add basic lighting. So what we're going to do is we're going to make, what's this layer? This is just a blank layer. Uh, I don't know why I have it in there. Let's delete it. Obviously, you don't, I don't see anything of being affected by it. Uh, we're going to make a new layer. We're going to put it underneath the line work. And we're going to call it shadows. We are going to choose the general color of the scene, uh, which the background would, you know, call for one of these purpley blue colors, or just more blue than purple. Set it to multiply, and drop down the opacity to about 30, 25, 30 percent. And at this point, you start. You gotta establish a a light source. So for us. The wave would be covering everything in the front, so I'm just going to assume that the light source is from this direction. So if the light here, just uh, let's make a so we're going to establish the light source, and it's going to be generally, you know, from this direction it's going to be coming this way so i'm going to just assume that there's like you know like a lighthouse or something like that and that's going to be how we approach it so we're going to choose the general color of the background like the scene i normally like to do it like that because that way it keeps all the color consistency together we're going to go back to our shadow layer set to multiply and then we just start playing with the shapes if the light is coming from here, then we need to make sure that our shapes are being, you know, they have shadows coming, getting hit in the right direction. And you have to consider a couple elements when it comes down to this. Not necessarily just where the light is coming from, but what objects are creating shadows on top of other objects. Uh, for example, in this little part, it's more so like 
it's just the back of the head, right? And it's the back of the hair. So we have to make sure that that's completely in shadows so everything else pops out. And we're just setting down very, very basic colors. Like very, 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 very basic. Like we're just gonna assume that everything is solid and everything has like that. We're not gonna worry about like strands of hair or anything like that yet. We're just gonna make sure that if this was like a big circle, how would it be filled in? It would be filled in with the edges getting hit like that. In animation, we like they we do that a lot. We just kind of like cheat the system when it comes down. We kind of like trick people's eyes into accepting that something is simpler than it actually is, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, it just means that you don't have to have everything anatomically perfect or anything like realistically perfect. Because if you did it like that, especially in the animation industry, like you would get anything done, like nothing at all. like nothing like would get done if we couldn't cheat our way through things. Example here, I established the arm shadow before I go in and do the shape sh like the shape shadows. Here, overlapping shapes, and that would be just shadow. Okay, maybe this would be blocked with the body as well, so it'd be a little bit bigger. Okay, it's coming out nice. The ear, for example, like you would have a shadow coming in from here in this, and maybe, maybe you'd have a little bit of light hitting it right there, but it's so small that we can leave it for a detail like that can be done later. The nose, the underneath of the nose would be a little bit. There would be shadows right here. There would be shadows under under part of the lip. Remember, we're seeing all these different things as shapes. Okay, the nose itself would cast a shadow onto the bottom part of the, like the upper part of the lip. Uh, let's see. I like to just give them slight shadows right there anyways, just in case. Uh, underneath the eyebrows. the hair would cast a shadow on itself. And a lot of these we're gonna blend and some of these we're not gonna blend. Now, uh, how you decide what type of shadows like go onto an object are is very interesting. Because like I remember when I found out like the little like trick to which like if it's a soft shadow or if it's a hard shadow once I found that out, it, it took my drawings from looking amateurish to much, much better. I mean, I was still, you know, an amateur, but it helped, you know, it helped me considerably. And what, you know, that means, I'll, I'll explain it in a little bit whenever I, when we finish laying down our, our shadows, like our basic shadows. So shoulders are round, right? They have a little bit of depth, so you can, you know, give that depth with the actual shadow. The biceps round, so it's like this shape, so you have to, you know, give it shadows according to what the shape is. Uh, something fell in my, in my room. <laughs> and then just proceed accordingly 
just think of everything as basic shapes and it's going to be a lot easier. So the light would hit there, so it would have a little bit of a shadow on it. Uh, this one would be mostly covered and this one wouldn't have anything. Okay. All right, that's looking good, it's looking good. Uh, this one, the arm would be the main caster of a shadow here. Even though that little section is going to be transparent and we haven't set this color of this little part up, I'm still going to cast a shadow because it's overlapping. Okay, let's make this a little smoother. And then the light would come this way, so... Maybe this would be shadowed, this would be shadowed, little edges would be shadowed. But then the main part of the body, like this part went. Okay, same thing here, maybe the rocks casting a little bit of a shadow. And there you go. So that's looking good. Uh, I don't know why this didn't get changed in color. There you go. And let's add a couple of the splashes in here too. Okay. So we're going back to this. If you ever deselect your shadow layer in just make sure to turn it back onto normal and 100% to select it again because otherwise you're going to end up with a different color for your shadows. So just make sure that you either save the selection, like the color, save it, you know, so you remember where it is or go back and, you know, select it every single time. Okay, the neck has some depth. The clavicle as well. And this is why I emphasize anatomy. Like all these little tiny details, like the neck lines, the little overlapping shape that considers the bottom of the, like the face, all that, you know, I, you, you normally wouldn't even add it if you didn't know anatomy. So that's why I really always emphasize like you guys learning how to do like even just basic anatomy. Uh, it's very important. And I think that it's like, uh, actually, it's probably if you want to ever do anything with comics or animation, it's probably one of the most important things you need to learn. It's one of the most annoying because it takes a while for it to even click but it's very important and you guys should all you know pick up some books and learn how to or just practice the way that I've been like showing you guys on YouTube that would probably help considerably okay Yeah, definitely take a look at the videos with that deal with anatomy in my channel. And you guys will improve not tooting my own horn or anything, saying that I'm like the best at explaining how to do things. But they I think I think it would help you guys considerably. Okay. So this part, even though we haven't set the little part on top, this part would still be in shadows if this part's in shadows. But not all of it because it's still a shape in its own so maybe the top part wouldn't be. Now this part would be S but not the top. Okay perfect 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 so far looking good. 
we have the hair for the most part we have the body uh, I want to emphasize this a little bit more and a little bit less over here I think it just defines it too much and then it throws off the rest of the image okay cool so she is set for now let's give booby his little tiny shadows and as you can see there's like a bunch of things i need to fix so going back to the hair raising that raising that going back to booby little tiny details okay go back to the whites where's the whites there you go perfect and now we go back to our shadow layer and booby is really easy to color like shadow because he's just two little like cylinders okay so the light would hit him there <clears throat> okay the eyes they also receive shadows of course because the eyelids are casting shadows over everything else and you want to make them look even rounder than you would if you just lay them flat like that the lips cast a shadow over here the mouth casts a shadow over the tongue she does have her mouth open so it wouldn't be too much okay and let's give like a little indication of the nose bridge. I think this section too is too much. Uh, we'll refine in a second. So we have that. Let's go to Archie. Oh wait, no, we haven't drawn the bra. So these would be considered three different sections. Three different shapes for each side of the bra that need to be shaded accordingly. And that provides, and it's gonna pop out even more when we add highlights. But highlights, I like to leave them towards the end because they're my, my happy time. Like that's the one part of every drawing I leave for last because I know that it means that it's going to be completed and it also means that I get to have a little bit of fun with it. Okay, so the bra set. Let's move on to Archie and then we'll play with softening up some of the shadows. So we're going to have the same lighting for Archie. So you can start with the easier parts that already have like basic shapes so this one's a cylinder so this one would be this side you know the arm is casting a shadow on the body so we draw that and then well what's going on here uh, so where's the base color that's it so fix these little issues right here Make sure I fill in this area right here. Dark colors. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, okay, that's why. Okay. Now, since I accidentally deselected the shadow layer, I have to do the same thing. Take it back to normal and make sure that it's that. Okay. And then we can go back to our shadows. The mermaid tail would be casting a shadow onto him. His little fingers would be there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so have a little bit of roundness there. His head would be casting a shadow over the back of his body. And then the lighting 
just naturally would create a lot a shadow going this way the rock is going to be casting a shadow on the fish and then we proceed with the fish and I can tell a bunch of issues with the fish so we're just gonna switch that Okay. Okay, go back to our saddle layer and start adding detail. In this case, the head of Archie would be casting a shadow onto the lips of the fish. Okay, same here. Uh, let's give it some roundness to the eye. Same thing, you need to add a little bit of shadow to it. The gills would be their own shape, so they would actually cast a little shadow, but not too much. So we have that, the lips would cast the shadow onto the rest of the fish's body. And the shadow would be a little bit darker going this way. The bottom of Archie's face. Then his neck would create a shadow. Okay, his ears, since this is two different parts, this is the top part of the ears. We'll create a little shadow there. Same thing here. And this thing would have its own shadows. Okay, snow top of hair. His face in itself would have some sort of shadow going on. Mm. His little muscle or like snout would have its own shadow. Same thing with the mouth. His teeth would have a shadow. His lips would have a shadow, and they would cast a shadow underneath. <coughs> then, the same thing, the eyes have a shape. They have, they have to be round, so you have to make sure that the shadow provides that. Perfect, that works. The back of his ear. Alright, so I think we have our basic shadows for the, for the characters. We just have to add the basic shadows for the rock. And that's going to be interesting. Because assuming that the light source is here, we have to make sure that some parts of the rock are going to be lit, while some parts of the rock are not going to be lit. At this point, I'm kind of like freestyling it. And just kind of playing, making sure that the shapes read a little bit better. You can always go back and erase, obviously, if it doesn't read well or if it doesn't, you know, give you the look that you want. Mm. 
Okay, I think for the most part that looks that looks decent. That looks good. Little tiny details like this make a difference. Okay. So we have our basic shadows set. What do we do from here? Well, first, I want to make sure that I set this detail in before I forget. So we're going to go back to the skin tone. And we want this over everything else because it's going to be overlapping the other colors. So we're going to add this and we're going to call it tail flare. <laughs> we don't have to go back to our aerial. Uh, actually, let's do it. <laughs> Why not? Uh, we go back to our aerial image, and we're just going to select the outline of it. There you go. We're going to go back to this, and we're going to fill this area. We might have to make this lighter, even though it's already almost white. Okay, let's get rid of all the extra, all the extra stuff that we drew in. Okay. And then at this point we can lock this and we're going to make a complete white highlight that's going to be really thin to give her the little flanges. Okay. Erase what you don't need, whatever you overlap. And I think we have that detail set. So we can, you know, just move on from there. Uh, I noticed that this little section right here, we could use a little bit of this, like little splashes. So I go back and edit that, add it in there, same thing here. Okay. So now, what do we do with the shadows? Uh, first, we got to establish. Ah. First, we got to establish what type of shadows we want. Uh, we could just leave it like this and it'd be fine. But I want to show you guys the way that I would go back and add a little bit more depth to the whole illustration in general. And at the same time as we go about this, we're going to erase all the outside shadows that we have. <clears throat> so, uh, what are the two types of shadows out there? Well, there's cast shadows. And let's make a little diagram, because I can. What was, what was this layer for? Okay, I'll just use that layer. So, diagram time. Have a sphere, right? And this sphere is going to have another sphere on top. And the light is going to be coming from this direction. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. So, what's going to happen with these spheres, it's two things. First, if we set our shadows, we're going to do the same thing, drop it, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to care about the color. We're just going to set our basic shadows. Right? And this would cast a shadow onto this. So we have that. So a cast shadow is this one right here. 
it's ah, it's hold on there you go it's the one this is the top object and the cast shadow is the shadow that is being hit by the other object that's getting cast by the other object those are nice and sharp they're always sharp because well that's just how it is and then the other type of shadows are form shadows and those are the ones that give an object its shape these are the ones that show that this is a sphere so if you smooth those out it gives you a more realistic look much smoother right and in combination with the sharp edge of the other shadows it creates a, like an element of realism so let's get rid of these two layers because we don't need them anymore boom oh. no no okay Get these two, and that's just trash. So what we're gonna do now is we gotta identify. I did it again. Gotta make sure I have this color selected. Just realized I'm missing a couple of pieces. Okay, so go back to about thirty percent or so. And let's make it a little heavier. All right, and we're gonna identify what shapes. What shadows are being cast and what shape like shadows, like shadows are being like form shadows. This one's pretty simple when it comes down to like a simple you know animation cell like this. So for example the hair. Let's make this the brush density. There you go. This shadow is a form shadow. So it'd be nice and smooth. Right? Same thing with this one. And this one as well. Now, for example, here it gets a little tricky because it's it's a form shadow next to a cast shadow. So we gotta make sure that this one's nice and sharp. This one is a shape shadow combined with a little tiny bit of a cast shadow. So we gotta make sure to set that differentiation. This is also a shape shadow. So nice and smooth. This one's like that. This one is also a shape shadow, shape shadow, shape shadow. And you can already tell it makes a little bit of a difference. Uh, same thing here. Uh, we have uh, two different elements. We have we have the cast shadow from the hair, but then it turns into a form shadow because that's how you establish the roundness of the arm. thing here all these are just shape shadows and sometimes it just like when you're blending them together it just muddies up a lot so you have to go back erase and that eliminates a little bit of the pixels and then you go back and blend it again it's a cast uh, that's a cast shadow but this is a shape shadow Right, that's a cast shadow, that's a cast shadow. These are shapes, shadows. And this one's interesting because these are all shape shadows, really. Except for the ones that are getting cast by the shape on top. Okay, that's cast shadows right there. This one isn't, 
and this one isn't. But this one is. These are all shape shadows, so these are smooth. But that's a cast shadow, so you need that nice and strong. This one's a shape shadow. And then you have to go in and like actually like make sure that the detail is right. Like for example, this one is a soft shadow, but if you smudge it, it smudges too much. There you go. That one too. These as well. And sometimes it's too much. You just have to blend it enough so it's still visible, but not like overwhelming it. Uh, these are too big. They're cast shadows, but they have to be smaller. Uh, same thing here. Uh, I gotta make the brush a little bit smaller. Refine it. These are cast shadows. And this is a form shadow. Mm. Smaller brush. Once you start getting into the little finer details, you have to make sure to switch back and forth between your brushes. Okay, so this little tiny section would be, this is a form shadow. Because the nose is nice and rounded, going into the nose bridge. But I don't think for this one, I don't think we have to go into that depth. These are form shadows. These are form shadows as well. Well, the top one isn't. The, the eye is tricky because this part is, but this part isn't. So you have to make sure to differentiate those two. Uh, these are form shadows as well. Okay, that's a cast shadow, that's a cast shadow. And I wanna give it a little bit more of a roundness to her tongue as well. So we're gonna add that, and since that's a shape shadow, we have to give it some shape. There you go. Okay, so for the most part, these are form shadows next to a cast shadow. So you would just make sure that you differentiate them. It's a cast shadow, cast shadow, these are form shadows. And, you know, for the most part, there you go with her. Booby doesn't have any cast shadows. They're all shape shadows. Oh, yeah, and we said that we were going to go in and delete, you know, unnecessary parts that we, just like any other color. It's just a different element in the design. Mm hmm And her breast would actually have a little bit of, you know, shape as well. So let's give it some. But it would be form shadows. So it'd be nice and round. go to Archie and then we can add highlights and then we are set. Cat's shadow, form shadow, form shadow, form shadow. Form 
this is a farm farm this is cast that's that's a farm shadow it's cast this is a farm shadows and I know it's very repetitive like trust me guys I understand that but it's stuff that you guys need to learn if you guys want to you know get to the next level like you can skip all these steps like it's not absolutely necessary to do them like at all like we could have stopped like considerable time ago but this is just extra steps that i want to show you guys because you know i want you guys to know first how i do things second i want you guys to be able to you know be a little bit more instructed when it comes down to you know how things get done properly and you know hopefully you guys get something out of it okay remember how i said that we were going to split the waves into two layers well the reason is because i first of all i want a little bit of splash going on in the front and i wanted to cover some of the fish with that so we're going to do the same thing that we did with uh with the waves but we're going to do it in the back so first we set brush brush mm -hmm. why is it not painting Hmm. It's painting that one. Oh, yeah, there you go. So we're going to do it on top of the line work because we want it to go on top of the line work. Oh, wait, no. The little splashy parts come with the white, not with this part. Okay, and then we're gonna give a little bit of that here. Just a little bit, not too much. Now we do the same thing. We give it the little foam and let's name this waves front. And I mean, yeah, we can just do it in the same layer. Uh, honestly, like it's not something that I feel like I'm going to edit later. So I'm just going to put it in the same layer. some water make it look like it's splashing just very random like it's really like no like there's no theory to this little part like I'm not like doing it in a certain way because you know I have a better technique and I know how things are done I'm just literally just drawing little lines and no splashes and Whatever comes up, that's what's going to stick. Mm -hmm. It looks pretty cool, though. It looks pretty similar to the, to the actual, like, image from the animation, which is really cool. Like, like I said, I've never, like, actually done studies like this before like doing my own versions of you know designs like this and it's really fun all right so i think we're almost done we just need highlights and that's it so hell yeah uh the highlights highlights are my favorite part like i said i normally set them at the top layer and I just choose white 
and you have to make sure that you realize where you're putting your highlights. That's very important. Uh, we established that the light source was coming from this direction, right? So if things were hitting here, we got to go back and establish what constitutes a surface that's going to be used with a highlight. Uh, normally it's very reflective surfaces and that includes the eyes, maybe the lips, sometimes the skin calls for it, but you know, sometimes it doesn't. So in this case, the eyes, of course, so we're going to give it some highlights. The tip of the nose is normally one that I like to do, but I also like to give a highlight to the ridge of the nose, like the little tiny breaking point between the nose and the bottom of the nose. Uh, the reason that I do that is because it just creates a better synergy, like a nicer synergy with it. Uh, like I said, go back in delete little details that you don't need. Go back to your highlights layer, the top of the lips. The top of the lip right here. Make it nice and wet looking. Maybe her tongue a little bit. Let's give this guy a little bit too. Um, Boom. Boom. Okay. Uh, I don't think her skin requires too much highlights, except for like the tail and stuff. This, the shells would definitely need highlights. And there's a little tiny surfaces on the shell, so you can also add a little bit of texture when it comes down to do that with the actual highlights. Okay, so we have that. This little part, of course, would have highlights. Like, it just seems like it would be wasted potential if I don't add them. Okay, her tail would have some highlights as well. Mm, let's see, anything else on her? Maybe the hair, but we... I don't like doing straight up white highlights on hair. So we're gonna make another layer and we're gonna make it like 50% you know, opaque, so we can do the highlights on the hair. Highlights on Archie's eyes. I noticed that the shadows weren't blended properly in this eye. So, just go back in and change it. The tongue, the lips, the nose already has a little bit of highlight. Uh, no, that's fine. Uh, nothing really else on Archie needs highlights. Like, one problem that a lot of people do is they just add highlights to everything, and it just makes everything look like plastic. It's weird. Like, just normally add highlights to anything that's wet or anything that's really reflective. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Little lips would be wet. Uh, the rock. I'm gonna set the highlights for the rock in the same highlight layer as the hair, because it's not supposed to be like super bright highlights on those. So we're gonna so name that soft highlights. We're gonna drop this down to about fifty percent. I keep pressing buttons that I'm not supposed to. There you go. Um, then her hair. Like, hair is interesting because you have to make sure that you draw the highlights in the direction the hair is going. Sometimes when you add too many, it just looks weird. 
where you get like that anime look. But if you add the right amount, it looks awesome. Like not too little, not too many, but you just have to find the right balance. And that comes with practice. Like there's no one that's gonna be able to tell you like what style of like hair highlights you're gonna wanna add to your drawing. Like you just have to, you know, try out some new things and then eventually you'll come up with a with a cool way to do it yourself. All right, maybe a little bit less. There you go. I like that. Then we're going to go with, maybe we'll add some soft highlights to the body as well. There's a shadow there I don't want. Yeah, the rock is just going to have some highlights because it is supposed to be wet, but not too many, just on the very edges that I established as the edges of the rocks. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think she needs highlights like any more than that. But uh Geez, guys, uh, it's been it's been a considerable amount of time. Uh, hopefully, you guys aren't bored shitless with everything that I did. Um, let me know if you guys enjoyed the video. Oh, and of course, I can't forget the signature. Signature layer. Uh, whenever I set my signature, I just like to make sure that it's a little bit hidden so it doesn't like take away from the design so we're just gonna sign it right here 17 there you go <laughs> one more thing that you can do to make it stand out even more is to add like below the highlights oh my god i'm getting driven crazy by pressing the wrong lights uh, go be line below your line work. What's this one? Oh, I already have a layer. We're gonna name this gradient. And to add a little bit more depth to it, we're gonna select the gradient. We're gonna select again the background color. Uh, let's go with a lighter background color. And we're gonna go from foreground to transparent. Foreground to transparent. Then we're gonna select it. We're gonna just drive that like that maybe not so much like that we're gonna set that to overlay or just screen nah multiply overlay just drop it down a little bit so we have that or we have that it just makes it stand out a little bit more and it's you know a nice little effect that you can have Oh my god, stop pressing buttons. Okay, so that would be the final step that I had. And we are done. Oh my god, we're finally done. So, all right. Okay. Well, that, that took a while, didn't it? Uh, sorry if it took too long. Uh but at least this is a learning experience for all of us. If you are interested in videos like this, I don't mind doing them. And like I mentioned before, you know, maybe we can set up a chat and then all you guys can jump in and just talk with me and ask questions as we go about doing the illustration, which would be really cool. And I think it would add an extra element to the whole process so you guys can be more one-on-one -on -one with me and be able to do things like that. Once again, thank you so much for being the OGs. You guys are the original people, like the most supportive people that I've had so far. You know, you 17 people that are signed up right now. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are amazing. For those patrons that signed up for the $15 print, 
you guys can always wait until I do another one and see which one you guys want to do. Or if you guys are signed up and you guys constantly want prints of the designs that I do, hey, just keep it at that tier. I just want to make sure that you guys don't get overcharged for the designs that maybe you guys don't want to use. So if you guys got the print, you guys can select this one or you guys can opt for the next tier down. And if you guys want to set your you know, level down a little bit so you guys don't get charged $15 because you don't want any, like more prints and stuff like that, that's perfectly fine. Just go ahead and do that. Just send me a message and let me know what you guys want. I'm here for you guys once again. Let me know what you guys want. If you guys like the video like this, perfect. I'll be more than happy to do more videos like this. We'll just implement other steps to make it more entertaining for you guys. If you guys want something a little bit more sped up, a little bit where I explain a little bit quicker what everything's doing without you, know, you guys having to see me do the whole thing, we can do that as well. But you guys are the bosses here. You guys are the supportive people and I am here doing all these videos for this Patreon just for you. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys loved it and I'll see you guys next week in a new video. Thank you.